see, God looks at us in our current state and sees us in our intended state. Your breakthrough may not come the way somebody else got their breakthrough. Your breakthrough may come a totally different way. God has given you the victory and they call it the triumph is yours. Health is a mindset. Wealth is a mindset. Prosperity is a mindset. One of the things that I have passionately carried in my heart is to help people discover their authentic identity and to develop leadership and empower people to become all that God's created them to be and to do and to have. The belief that I have is that the greatest discovery is self-discovery. Because if you don't discover yourself, you don't know what you really have or what you're capable of doing until you really discover yourself. And I find that it takes courage to be yourself. A lot of times people are masking different things to hide behind certain things because they fear that if they really be who they really are, people will not accept them. And they have a sense of rejection on the inside of them that has to be dealt with and pulled out and removed so they can come into discovering who they really are and what God's created us for, what God's created us to be, to do, and to have. And so I want to help people to discover who they are in Christ, number one, what they have in Christ, and how they can tap into the potential that is within them to maximize that potential, shape their future, and create a new reality. And you can do this by understanding the power of your mind, the power of thoughts, that thoughts creates beliefs, beliefs creates behaviors, behavior creates certain feelings, which causes certain words to come out of your mouth and then creates actions. You can shape your inner world through your thoughts, beliefs, and feelings, where your outer world becomes an out picture of what's on the inside. So everything you see in your environment around you, guess, what it came, guess where it came from? Yeah, see, it didn't start out there. It had to start in the invisible realm. So everything visible finds its origin in the invisible. Even the world, even how God created the world, the heaven and earth. God framed the world by his word, by his word. He created the world by his word. The spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters, the deep, and God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God began to create the word by words. See, words are powerful. Thoughts are powerful. The thoughts we think, the words we speak are shaping our world every day. Romans in chapter 12, verse 2, he said, be ye not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you be able to prove that which is good, acceptable, and the perfect will of God. In other words, transformation doesn't come by the removal of the mind. It comes by renewing of the mind. So if you want to experience transformation in your body, transformation in your finances, transformation in your health, transformation in your relationships, it has to come through mind renewal. It's the way we think. Solomon said, as a man thinking in his heart, so is he. As you think in your heart and you see yourself, you believe that, you begin to outpicture that in your environment because your thoughts have a way of sending frequencies because it's energy, thoughts are units of energy, and it always goes out to look for its match to bring it back in. So we need to think good thoughts, healthy thoughts, prosper thoughts, thoughts of success. Having knowledge in these things makes it very important how we're going to affect our lives. A lot of times people don't understand that they're entertaining negative thoughts, negativism, you know, down and out, struggle, struggle, struggle. God never created you to have to struggle. Struggle all the time. Struggle, 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 struggle. Who told you you had to struggle all the time? That's a mindset. That's a belief system. But God came through his son, Jesus Christ, to make us free. We can be free in Christ from the very results or the trappings of what took place in Adam in the beginning 
in the garden. When Adam sinned in the garden against God, sin passed down through all mankind. And the Bible said all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Well, through one man's disobedience, we all were made what? Sinners. Why can't we believe that through one man's obedience, who is Christ, we've been made the righteousness of God? Therefore, we now reign in life in Christ Jesus. God has given us the ability to represent him and to reflect who he is in the earth. With that in mind, I have discovered that purpose is the most important thing in life. I believe the greatest tragedy in life is not death. But the greatest tragedy in life is life without a purpose. Because we don't know who we are and where we're going. So it's more tragedy to be alive and not know why. Than to be dead and not know life. Go with me to Proverbs chapter 19 verse 21 real quickly. There are many devices in a man's heart. Nevertheless, the counsel of the Lord that shall stand. In the NIV, it talks about there are many plans in a man's heart. But it's the purpose of the Lord that shall stand. In other words, God is more concerned about his purpose than he is about your plans. Purpose is more important to God than all your plans that you make in life. All your feasibility studies, all of your research, all of the things you can put together in your plans. You're getting ready to do this. God says, listen, my purpose is what stands. Many are the devices in a man's heart. And I had to discover something because in my life, I had to come into a place to pursue purpose and understand why I'm here, what God's called me to do, and knowing who I really am and be that. The word purpose is defined in the Hebrew text is the original intent or the will of a mind. The original reason why something was created. Purpose means the motivation that started creation. Purpose has to do with the reason for existence. Why something exists is called its purpose. Why? If you don't know the purpose of the thing, you're going to abuse it. Oh, if you don't know why you have something, you will abuse it. Write this down real quickly. Put it in your notes. Number one, God is a God of purpose. God is a God of purpose. In other words, God does nothing without a purpose. Everything God does, he does it for a purpose. Always remember that. Everything has a purpose. Number two, nothing in life is without purpose. Say that back to me. Nothing in life is without purpose. Did you know the ants have a purpose? The gnats? Mosquitoes? Snakes, the hair in your nose, the hair in your ears that you clip off and you take a little thing. To... Did you know that even the, the leaves on the trees has purpose? If it had not been for the leaves on the trees, do you know you wouldn't be here? Why? Because it has a purpose. What create what? Oxygen. Everything has a purpose. Number three, not every purpose is known. Not every purpose is known. Even though God created, there's things that people have not discovered what the purpose is it for. Four, when purpose is not known, abuse is inevitable. When purpose is not known, abuse is inevitable. In other words, that means that if you don't know purpose of a thing, all you can do is abuse it. Everybody say abuse. abuse. Abnormal use. So if you don't know the purpose of the thing, it's going to be abnormal use. It's not going to be a normal use for it because it becomes abnormal. It becomes abuse. Say for instance, people that don't know the purpose of a job, you have job abuse. You go to work late. You leave early. You take long lunches. You abuse it. 
Some people think the purpose of a job is to just get paid. That's not the purpose of a job. The purpose of a job is work, not pay. That's why if you don't understand the purpose of a thing, you're going to abuse it. You know, God made Adam and he put him in the garden and he gave him what? Work before wife. So that means man should not have a wife before he has work or he should have work before he has a wife. And no woman should marry a man that's not working. (laughs) That's God's order. I said, that's God's order. He said, he love you. He said, love you. You're beautiful. Yeah, and you, you look real good. And oh, I just love to have you as my wife. And you ask him the most important question. Are you working? <laughs> Forget about all this other stuff. Are you working? See, you got to get back to God's order. Because if you don't know the purpose of things, you're going to wind up what? Abusing it. If you don't know what a purpose for a wife what it becomes wife abuse if you don't know the purpose of a husband what it becomes husband abuse you don't know purpose of children don't have them because if you have them and you don't know the purpose of a child it becomes child abuse you got to know what a child is for if you don't know the purpose of a generation then how can you have a generation that's going to fulfill the purpose? You have generation abuse. What is the purpose of the church? But church is not about just singing, clapping. It's not just about just running around, jumping, shouting. It's wonderful. You can do that. It's great. Please don't hear what I'm not saying. But that's not what all church is. Jesus said, upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. In other words, the church is to become a senate. It's become a a governmental peace, a governmental flow right in the midst of hostile forces. The church is a garden in the midst of the hostility around it. It should not reflect the world. It should be showing the world how God's kingdom operates. The church should be God's embassy on planet earth and to show the world. A different colony. God's intention in the beginning was to colonize earth with heaven. It's to bring about his will on earth as it is in heaven. That's why he taught the disciples how to pray. He says, pray after this manner. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Where? On earth as it is in heaven. He didn't say pray thy church go. He said, pray thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth. The government of God, the rule of God, the reign of God comes in the heart of believer. God sets his government inside of us when we are born again. We are born by the spirit of God. Jesus Christ comes on the inside. He's king of kings. He's lord of lords. He rules over all. And now I allow that kingship to govern my life. Govern my attitudes, govern my walk, govern how I deal with affairs every day. I walk by the values and the principles of the kingdom of God, and I bring that into the world system. Jesus knew who he was. From day one, he knew his purpose. From age 12, he told his dad and mom, I know why I'm here. I must be about my what? I must be about my father's business. He did not experiment with life. Why? Because he knew his purpose. When you don't know your purpose, all you can do is experiment. And if you have been experimenting, you have to try this, try that, change this, change that, do this, do that. God is saying, there's a purpose, beloved, and time is passing by. Find your purpose. How do you know? If you don't know the purpose of a pastor, what are you going to have? Pastor abuse. What's the purpose of a pastor? 90% of people I ask that have no clue. Let me tell you the purpose of a pastor. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 11. It says God gave some apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. For the what? Perfecting of the saints. For the work of the ministry. For the edifying of the body of Christ. In other words, a pastor is to prepare you for the work of the ministry.
You see, God looks at us in our current state and sees us in our intended state.